Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast. Thanks for watching. If you have ever noticed the side dots on your guitar neck, but never even seen the face dots, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. All right, today we are going to be installing some side dots on this neck and the shop is a total disaster area. Nothing is where it's supposed to be. Um, there's crud all over the place that needs to be vacuumed, but I don't want to do that. I want to use power tools instead. So, um, we are going to be working on this neck here. As you can see, it does not have any dots on either side. This is a right-handed neck, so it's only going to get dots on this side. And I thought I would give you a quick tutorial on how we do it anyway, and uh, see if that'll help you out on some of your builds. So, a um, little bit about this neck, and I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the pitfalls of doing this too soon or too late. Um, this is a bound neck, which makes it so much easier to, uh, to do side dots on because all you have to do is go through the, the binding. Um, and when you see on the drill press later on here in the video, I'm just going to basically go through the binding. As soon as a little bit of wood starts coming back out, we're done. Um, this is also a radius fret board already. I like to wait until the boards are radius before we do them. That way you don't have any of those weird things where, oh no, I mounted it a little too high and I used a little too curvy of a radius and now I've got side dots that are also face dots kind of thing, you know what I'm talking about? Um, so I always wait until the, um, the boards are radius. Uh, let's see, let's see. This one is more or less contoured on the back. I probably should have done this uh, right after it was radius and before it was contoured, but it's not going to be a big deal. Um, you'll see why. Uh, so let's get started. There are a handful of jigs and fixtures that you can buy that have each one of the side dots laid out exactly perfectly. Um, we don't use those. Um, you know, with a little bit of patience and a little bit of skill, you can get side dots to look great without actually having to uh, use a jig or a fixture. You can just use your eyeball and maybe some danger glasses if you're old like me. So I'm going to show you what I do First, with the neck, we're going to mark it, and then we're going to go over the drill press, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all said and done. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a sharp pencil, and we're going to draw, scribe a line, draw or scribe a line down the neck. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my finger as like a, an edge guide. Let me see if I can get this in the camera here. So I've got... Looks like it's about in the middle, and I'm just going to run the pencil down the length of the neck. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, now I've got my line scribed down the, uh, the center of the binding here. And now what I'm going to do is the thing that takes a little bit of skill. And that is I'm going to, by eye, find the center of the third, fifth, seventh, ninth, twelfth, and so on down the line frets. Now, this is where people kind of get goofed up and they want to buy jigs. Um, and that's cool, but remember, your eye naturally wants to find the center of things. It's a pretty remarkable tool, even old ones like mine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go, yeah, that looks pretty good, right in the center of number three. One, two, three, four, five, and then five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. When you get to the twelfth, I like to put two there. Um, sometimes, and I'm going to show you a guitar here later on in the video that is uh, a factory guitar that the 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 two dots on the twelfth fret are a little bit hurdy gurdy. So I like to put them closer together rather than further apart. That way, it it's the a higher likelihood that it's going to look cool. So I'm going to go one on the 12th here and two on the 12th. All right, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay. So now you can see, hope you can see in the camera here, you can see those little, those little marks. Let's get the 12th in there. There you go. So um, I have all the locations marked. 
It's not a bad idea to double check this before you start drilling. <laughs> um, ask me how I know. But um, we are essentially ready to drill. So we're gonna go over to the drill press and we're gonna drill these for side dots. All right, so we got our side dots are all laid out. Uh, seems like a good idea to go ahead and put the face dots on this. Now this is going on to what we call a toast right. It's our version of the, uh, the classic uh, Mose right. And uh, so it's, it's giving face dots, but they're a little different than what you might find on like say a Fender or, or even a Gibson with dots. Um, instead of the quarter inch or 5 16 circles, it's getting 3 30 seconds dots. And it gets a little more of them than, um, than you know, the standard. So in the third, fifth, seventh, ninth, it'll get two small dots. And on the 12th fret, it'll get three small dots. So we're gonna go ahead and lay that out now because the, uh, the bit that we're gonna use for the side dots is exactly the same as the bit we're gonna use for the face dots in this case. So we might as well do them all at the same time. So um, let me show you how we lay those out. Okay, the standard way to do this when you're laying out like a, a face dot would be to you know, go across the um, the uh, from corner to corner and back again and that'll establish your center line. When you do that, what I like to do is I like to do one down here and one down here and then actually attach them with a straight edge rather than make sure I get uh, you know lined up on, on each one. Uh, it kind of gets rid of some of that stacking tolerance if you do it that way. You can also use a centering ruler. That's also a good way to go. We're going to use that here in just a second too. Um, so, but on these, because it's getting two dots per, um, per location, I'm going to go ahead and use a scale to, uh, on the edge and, um, I'll do one here and one here. And then that's where the, uh, that's the, the line for the dot is going to go there. All right. So now we have the, um, the, the locations marked for the face dots and they're a half inch from the uh, the other side of the board here. So now what we got to do is we got to figure out where the um, where the center is. And again, we can probably just sort of eyeball that. That looks pretty good right there. Looks pretty good right there because your eye really does want to find the center, guys. So these machinist scales work great because you can bend them around the radius of the fretboard. And you know what I like to do is. <sighs> Again, because I'm not, I'm not getting all anal about how exact they are, you know, you can look on here and if you're going like this and you can see that it's obviously, you know, a different distance from, you know, here I'll exaggerate, you can tell that's different. Well, you can tell if it's just a little bit off too. Your eye will pick that out. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and mark these with a center punch and get ready to drill. All right, so as you can see, I have marked these with a center punch. That does a couple of things. One, it gives my brad point something to index on and it kind of helps, you know, ease things along. The other thing is now I've got dots that are on the board and they're very small, but if something's way off or hurdy-gurdy, I can see it before I go, you know, putting up a hole that I can't fix in later on. So everything's marked, everything's ready to go. The 330 seconds brad point bit is in the, um, in the drill press, let's go drilling. All right, my neck is all set up. It's in a little cradle on the uh, drill press and I've got a 3 30 seconds brad point bit in the, uh, in the unit. This brad point has a really super long point, which is handy because, you know, it just, it just kind of makes things go a little bit better. And I got my danger glasses on. Yeah, look at that, that's gonna be great. All right, enough of the bullshit talk, let's get working. Now on these first two, I wanted to stop before we went any further. Um, these guys, uh, you know, I don't, I don't need to go down too far because uh, the, everything's already radius, so I really just need to go down just enough to have uh, a spot in the neck that will allow for the, uh, the dot. So, all right, I'm, I got a bunch more drilling to do. I'll come back to y'all later. All the face dots are now drilled. It's time to do the side dots, and we're gonna basically do those exactly the same way. Okay, the dots are all in and they look pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and uh, put the actual material that's going to be uh, the inlay part. We're going to use the um, plastic rod from Stuart McDonald for the side dots, we're gonna use black, and for the face dots, we're gonna use, I think we have white. So, let's do that now. Okay, we're back on my workbench and I've got some 
of the Stumac side dot material and this is going to go pretty fast. So what I do is I just put some in there and nip it off with these, these nippers. Because this is made out of the same stuff that they make the binding with, it is soluble in acetone. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put all these in. And then we're going to float some acetone around them. And it'll be done. All right, I got my handy uh, binding acetone syringe here, and I'm just going to float acetone over these dudes. And um, yeah, that'll work just as well as it does to hold binding on the edge of the guitar. If you haven't watched my uh, video where I demonstrate how to do this, you should go find it because it's a really good video idea. And you know it's good because I stole it from some guy. Apparently, people have been doing this for a long time, and uh, it really, really works. Okay, so base dots are in. Now we're going to do the side dots. And the cool part about using acetone, unlike super glue, is not if, but when you get a bunch of it dripped down the side of the neck or onto the fretboard, you don't have to clean it up. You don't have to spend a lot of time swabbing it off. Man, we used to use super glue to do this. And uh, it's faster, but man, it's, it's, well, the, it's faster on the front end because the glue sets up so quick, but the cleanup is really a pain. So we'll get a little more acetone in these guys. We'll come back in a little while and we'll clean them up and we'll be ready to rock. Well, we'll be ready to finish the neck. Well, we'll be ready to put frets in the neck. Man, we got a long ways to go before we're ready to rock. So that's how we do it here at the shop. If you have any questions about uh, what we did today, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Um, I suspect I'm going to get a lot of things like, there's no way you're ever going to be able to get those to look right without a jig. Eh, maybe. Um, so in that case, make a jig. Uh, but this way actually works great and it's quick and fast. And if you just take your time, um, you know, you get great results. So it occurred to me after I was done filming this that I didn't show you all how to clean up the excess. The hot ticket is to take a razor blade and just kind of run it right over the, the dot and uh, use, the, use the fretboard as a guide and, uh, you know, works every time. So if you like the video, give us the thumbs up. And if you appreciate content like this, go over to our Patreon page and uh, check it out. Consider being, uh, becoming a Patreon member. Uh, for only a buck a month, that really goes a long way to helping us out. And uh, remember, every dollar that you spend goes towards your next Texas Toast Guitar purchase. Um, if you can't do that, we totally get it. What would be great though is to copy and share this video everywhere you can. Tell all your friends. Or if you're like me, tell all your friend. Um, so this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching everybody. This hammer came in for a little bit of finish work, and this is my buddy Lance's guitar. And if you look at the side dots on it, you will see, like especially on the 12th fret, you know, it, it's really close, but it's not, it's not exactly dead on. And um, if you look at any of the old fenders from, especially from back in the handmade days, they're all over the place.